Welcome to episode number 28 of the Better With Brock podcast. It's now 2023 and in this podcast, I'm going to give you five new year resolutions that anyone can apply if you're struggling to find any or struggling for motivation for the year. There's a lot of pressure on this time of year and these new year resolutions are very easy to apply. They're very basic, but they stand on the shoulders of great principles that help you to improve the quality of your of your life, improve the productivity of your life, and ultimately just your health and well-being. And then I'm also going to close the podcast with five quotes to charge you or recharge you or push you into 2023 so that you can feel that motivation, feel that drive. And even though it's just a flip of a calendar year, it's just you know another year, there's no real significance because every single day is the same it is a nice time to sit and reflect because we're often off work we're around friends and family we may have more downtime so it's good to realign what wall the ladder is on or where your target is in life because if you have no target it's very hard to feel driven to do anything i like to think of humans as arrows and an arrow is pretty pointless if it isn't in flight and on its way to a target. There isn't much purpose. And I think we're the same. And I think we struggle with with our motivation, our push, our drive when we don't have anything to aim for. So if you don't have anything to aim for, I'd love this podcast to just encourage you to really uh, make this year different, make this year the year where things do actually change because as a personal trainer 2000s, there's a lot of people that are struggling and are looking for something to find. And I hope that these uh, that these points in this podcast really help you. So this is going to be a relatively quick podcast, uh, around half an hour, because I just want to get this out there. I'm just at home recording this with my coffee. And I want to just encourage you really to have an awesome year. So I'll start off with the new year resolutions that I really want to encourage you to take on board uh, to apply to your life. And this doesn't have to be a new year resolution for you, but it could just be parked in the back of your mind to help you be better. This is the Better With Brock podcast. And as much as I love training and nutrition and 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 personal training, health and fitness, I love self-development. I'm always reading a book. I'm currently reading The, the Paradox of Choice. And uh, that is awesome at the moment. But anyway. Point number one is read more books. I think the biggest flaw in people's minds that they have is that their education stops when they finish school or when they get a job. I think that with a world so saturated with many things in many industries, it isn't saturated with people that are extremely skillful at their craft. And this could be a sport that you're playing this could be a business that you're running this could be you know a company that you work for this could be anything that you're interested in i think you should read more books in things that you're interested in because as i said before i don't think the world has enough people that are extremely skillful at their craft there's a lot of people that do jobs but there's not a lot of people that really excel that dive deep that go the extra mile and i think that's what helps people get to the top and I think that that's really helped me have some longevity to my career. Most personal trainers last six months, I posted this a while ago in a podcast that I did with Liz King, which was episode number 27, the one before this. The, the average lifespan of a personal trainer is six months, you know, and I started in 2015. So now I'm on my eighth year. I've 16 times that <laughs> that 16 month threshold that people usually last and i think that's because i find it interesting and i read a lot of books i've spent thousands of dollars i've spent uh, hundreds of hours at seminars learning of the greats learning of people that i admire in the industry and i think that that's really helped me stick around in the industry and have the ability to help thousands of people because i did start in a gym once with around 20 to 50 clients 
And as much as I loved that, I felt like I was called to more. And as I dived more into the educational side of things and grew my knowledge, not just in personal training, but also dealing with people, uh, body language, um, language, how to tell stories. I read a ton of books. I just finished one called Save the Cat, which is on screenwriting, which to be honest, I found horrifically boring, but it was about story. It was about how to write a good movie. And even though I don't plan on writing a movie, I would like to write a book one day or something like that. And I, I tell stories every single day on social media. So I thought that that would be helpful. So I'm not only learning about fitness, but also how to craft my stories and how to deal with people. And that is what my job entails. And as I said, I think that's why I've had uh, the opportunity to train multitudes of people because I have read more books. And I just think that it's such a great way to grow your vocabulary, to become more interesting, to, to become more detailed in how you talk. And once again, if you do want to excel in a career, you should really be reading in your industry to help become better because just like the fitness industry is saturated with personal trainers with six packs, uh, posting workouts, not a lot of personal trainers actually have a really decent amount of education that is based on science, that is based on results. And I think that's where I stand out. And I think that's where you could stand out with your, with your career and whatever you're pursuing. Uh, I had a client, his name was Freddie. When I was working face-to-face -face in Sydney, this would be in 2017, 2016, I looked after him and he would always read stuff to do with his work. He worked in finance, so he would wake up and read about the market and he would read uh, finance journals, finance reports and all that kind of stuff. And I was always like, well, you know, why don't you read self-development and why don't you read this and read that? But it, it started making sense to me as he continued to excel in his industry that he was just, he was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I just need to be really good at my job. And I think that's another thing that we can add on to this is like, okay, yes, read more books, Brock, but what books read books that are going to help you get to where you want to go. It's nice to read general knowledge and things that interest you outside of what you do for work. But if you really do want to continue to grow and provide for your friends and family, I think that, you know, learning is key in your, in your space that you work in. A quote that I made up that I don't know if someone else made it up. It's, it's, it's very basic, but uh, the more you learn, the more you earn, or the more you know, the more you grow. These quotes were what really helped me dig into my personal training studies. So that is new year resolution. Number one, read more books. And that is going to me as well. I've already started. I'm halfway uh, through my first book and it's only the, the 5th of January. So yeah, read more books. Number two, go for a 15 minute walk every day. And this is a minimum, but I think that in a world where convenience is prioritized so much, sometimes we have to inconvenience ourselves to hold on to the things that make us healthy human beings. If we're only pursuing what's convenient, we're never going to get our ass off the couch. We're going to work from home. We're going to be sedentary. We're going to order our groceries straight to our door. We're going to order our dinner straight to our door. And we're just going to really sit down and consume because that ultimately is what people are really pushing onto us. We have so many streaming services. We have so many uh, food delivery services. We have things that make our life easier, which I'm a fan of as well. But I think we also have to inconvenience our life sometimes to really hold on to things that that make us who we are and make us healthy. And that is walking for me. So even, even recently, me and my wife have been walking down to the grocery store. We could drive, but we walk. It takes us 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back. That That's inconvenient. We lose about an hour of the day where I could be working, which would ultimately lead to making more money. We could be doing anything else that we wanted, but we still hold on to that because we know that physical activity is so important. It's important for your mental health. It's important for your physical health, increasing your metabolism, getting blood flow around the body, all that kind of good stuff. And if we only prioritize what's convenient, then we're going to let go of that stuff. So go for a 15 minute walk every day. Everyone has 15 minutes. And what I do to make it a bit of a double whammy is I do stuff on my phone while I walk. If I'm on my own, I will edit videos. I'll answer story questions. Uh, I'll reply to comments. I'll answer emails that are quick off my phone. I'll do things like that just to make it more convenient. Maybe that's not the most healthy wellness walk that I could do, pondering thoughts and meditating and stuff like that. But that's just what I do 
to make my life more physically active. And you could do the same if you want. You could call a friend. You could walk with a friend. You could walk your dog. There's many things you can do to kind of make it double whammy. Like instead of just a walk, it's a walk and a social thing. Uh, it's a walk and a, make some phone calls for work. It's a walk and I don't know, going to the grocery store and coming back. It could be anything like that. But I think going for a 15 minute walk every day is a great minimum standard to hold. And if that's the only walk that you went for that day, that's better than nothing. A lot of people, especially when the pandemic hit, were getting around four to 6,000 steps per day that I was coaching because they just worked at home all day, every day. Family came home or family was already home. They finished work and they just didn't end up getting out for the day. And steps, your physical activity, your needs levels are very important for keeping your metabolism strong and burning the amount of calories that you need to, to, to remain healthy. So number two, go for a 15 minute walk every day. Number three, call your Nana more often. And this is more of a personal one for me because that's what I've started to do. Last year, I made a significant effort to call my Nana more often. And that is simply because I was a pretty bad grandson for a while and didn't call her much. So I've made it a priority to call her. And I was calling her every week, sometimes every second week, sometimes every third week. It was tricky when I was getting married and we were on honeymoon and stuff like that. But I really made an effort. But why should we be doing this? And I think number one, it keeps you grounded. And especially with grandparents, there's not much going on in a grandparent's life. They're very relaxed. They're often retired. They have a lot of time and they love hearing from you. So it's very nice for them to hear from you. And this is just a basic thing. It keeps you grounded. It's nice to hear from them. But recently, my Nana has moved into a retirement home. And the last time I called her was the first time that she said, like, it's really lovely to hear your voice because she feels a bit, she's in a new environment. She's surrounded by people that she doesn't really know, which is good because it's keeping her social, but she also doesn't have familiar things around her. She's in a very uh, isolated environment. And for me to call her gives her a little bit of something that she's familiar with. And, you know, it was actually really nice to hear that. Not that it's about me, but it was nice to feel that she was a bit more comfortable because I called her. And one thing that Gary V always talks about, Gary Vaynerchuk, the entrepreneur, he talks about like, if you want to know what's important in life, talk to 90 year olds and they'll tell you, they'll tell you what they regret. They'll tell you what they missed, what they didn't miss it and what they should have focused on, what they should have focused on more, should have focused on less, all that kind of good stuff. It's great insight. So calling your grandparents is a good insight into that. And one thing that I've learned is that my Nana doesn't really talk about her work of what she did. She, she worked in the vineyards, um, but that's not really the focus. She talks about her her daughter. She talks about, uh, you know, what she's been doing around the house and, you know, what she believes is important. And for me and my wife having a baby very soon, that's very important. She's asking a lot of questions about that. And it's, you know, not that we should just not worry about work and just worry about family, but it really gives you insight into what's important. Is she, and, and, and the decisions that we make are often based on things that we think are really important. But when we zoom out and talk to people that have lived a great life of 80 to 90 years old, we really see what is important. So I do encourage that. And maybe it's not your Nana, maybe it's your friend, maybe it's your brother, maybe it's your father, your mother that you need to call. But as I said, it keeps you grounded. It gives you perspective. And also one key thing that it does is it takes your mind off yourself. I found that when I have struggled with my mental health, when I lived in Auckland and lived alone and didn't have many friends and family around me, my problems were huge because I was just worried about myself. I wasn't calling anyone. I wasn't worried about anyone else but myself. I was very selfish. And because of that, everything was just huge. Everything exploded. Everything was a big deal. Everything was, oh man, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. I'd get super upset. I'd you know, I'd, I'd lie in bed thinking for days about the small little thing that's happening. And when you have other people's problems in your life, you can, you can grow, you can help people through their problems, you can learn from their problems, and then they can learn from you as well. And you have this nice exchange. And I think that when we're so isolated and selfish and worrying about ourselves and our problems and everything's about me, which I've definitely fallen into and tried to grow out of, you can become... Um, a very anxious and potentially depressed person because you're so self-centered. And that is a hard thing to hear, but I've been there, so I can talk about it. 
And that was definitely when I was at my lowest point. So calling your Nana more often can keep you in the loop with other people's lives and help you contribute to others, which I think is a big thing that can contribute to your happiness. So number three, call your Nana more often. Number four New Year resolution that you can have is play more board games. I'm a huge fan of Monopoly Deal. Uh, I also have an extreme liking for Unstable Unicorns. Uh, I think it's Exploding Kittens. These are probably my favorite, but I think that once again, with a world that pushes convenience and pushes sit down in front of the TV and just watch this TV series, turning the TV off and playing board games really, really makes your life more exciting. It deepens your relationships. It helps you learn things about other people that are close in your life that you live with. It could be your wife. It could be your girlfriend. It could be your roommates. It could be your parents, whoever you live with. But turning the TV off to play board games or to, to chat. How about just chatting with someone without your phones? How about that? What a crazy idea in 2023. These are the things that are dying. And these are the things that I think we need to really hold on to. Um, I love playing board games. And me and my wife went through a huge phase in the pandemic of playing board games and, you know, with our close family as well. And I think it really deepened our relationships. It really helped us connect. It helped us laugh. It helped us learn things about each other. So I won't spend too much time on this point, but I do believe that playing more board games with people in your life is going to make a big difference in the quality and depth of the relationships that you hold. And maybe it's not you know, the deepest things that you're talking about because you're playing a game and it's, you know, maybe you're competitive and, you know, maybe they're not competitive and they don't really care, but they just want to have a laugh. You learn stuff about people. And I think that that's super exciting. And I think skills of dealing with people and learning about people and conversing with people are skills that are potentially dying with dating apps where you can just swipe left and meet up with someone for a hookup or, you know, e e even I think, the kids that I see at the gym, the younger dudes that talk to me, I think they struggle to talk with people. And maybe that's just being young. Maybe that's just being slightly intimidated by talking to someone that's older than you. Uh, but I do see a lot of younger people struggling to talk to people. Uh, I didn't really struggle with that. I definitely struggled with talking to girls when I was younger, but I suppose that's a different style of conversation. Um, but I think that with texting, with going live on Instagram and dropping comments without any fee, um, you know, potential negative feedback because they're never going to meet you. I think this is having potential negative consequences for the younger generation because they're not actually dealing with real people. They're dealing with comments. And the, let me tell you something from someone that gets a lot of comments. The comment section is not a reflection of real life. I can't remember the study, man, but it's a really good study out. I'll have to find it, but there was a study where people inflicted pain to rodents, mice or rats in another room and they pressed the you know electric button. And when they saw the effect that they were having on people, they felt more sympathy. But when they didn't and they just pressed the button, they felt less sympathy for that person. So they were able to shock them more. This could be a, be a complete wrong way to word this study and maybe it's completely wrong but you can see what i'm kind of trying to come across is that you know if you if you can see the effect that you're having on the person like if i saw someone and said you know you're fat and ugly that would not be very nice and i would never really say that i wouldn't write that in a comment either but it would be easier to do that in a comment if I never met that person or saw that person and didn't know what the effect that that had on that person as well. So if I just commented to John 222, you're fat and ugly, that's much easier to do than walk up to someone and reply to them to a, or just say to them, hey, you're fat and ugly, right? I would never say that. I'd never comment that. But I'm trying to get the idea across that it's much easier to do things when you don't know the impact that it's having. So the comment section is not real. And we need to understand that with texting, with social media, even people's photos and videos that people post and they're so happy and they're doing this and that and la, 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 la. That's not what people's lives are like. I'll tell you that, you know, this is coming from someone that has, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of followers on every single platform that I use. Like it's, it's not, it's not real life. It's really not real life. 
Um, and I try to hold on to that as much as possible, but it's not, you know, the photos that people share, the videos that people share is amazing, but often it's not how they're feeling. Always you have to take it as it is. It's a highlight reel. It's, it's edited. It's curated. It's what you, it's what people want you to see. That's what you have to understand. Anyway, I'm getting slightly derailed. Play more board games. It'll be better for your interactions and your relationships and connections that you have in your life. The last point, a new year resolution that I want you to take on board. Stop multitasking. Multitasking was a term that they used for computers because a computer can do two tasks at one time. Human beings cannot. Let me repeat that. Human beings cannot. They can't multitask. Can you drive and text at the same time? No. That's why distracted driving is very dangerous and increasingly becoming more dangerous as people decide to text more often or call more often while they're driving. Can you text and hold a conversation? No. I had a conversation with someone the other day and we were talking for a good 15 minutes. He pulled out his phone and then he just stared blankly into my eyes while I was talking. And I could tell that he read something and he was figuring out what to say. And while I was talking, he just completely ignored what I was saying. So I just stopped talking because to be honest, I hate that. And if you uh, are a friend of mine or want to be a friend of mine, please do not text and talk to me because you're not going to be digesting that information that I'm telling you. And it pisses me off. And I think for most people, it pisses them off because people want to be listened to. So I would prefer you to say, sorry, man, I just need to reply to this text. Bang, put it in your pocket, done. One minute, gone. Two minutes, gone. But at least you're not ignoring me. So stop multitasking. There's a book that I read by Johan Hari. His name is, and I cannot remember what it's called. Um, let me just quickly find it for you. I want to get it right. It's called Stolen Focus by Johan Hari. And it's it's an amazing book about getting into the state of flow. It's an amazing book about keeping your attention focused and being intentional with what you do. And there's an idea where if you're doing a task, let's say you open up your phone and close it, you open up your phone and close it, open up your phone and close it, say within the space of 30 minutes, it takes time for you to process and get back into that task and if that's two to three minutes that you need to get back in and get back out if you do that three times so that could be nine minutes six minutes that you lost out of that half an hour if you multiply that by the amount of times you do that throughout the year you're going to have a significantly unproductive year in comparison to someone that just did a task didn't look at their phone for that entire 30 minutes and then looked at it after the 30, whatever, after they finished the task. Time chunking is a really good strategy. So what I'd recommend, instead of trying to multitask and do things, like this is something I learned from a business coach early on, and that is just simply to answer your emails from 11 to 11.30 and then don't look at them ever again. And then answer them again at 3 p.m. to 3.30 and then don't look at them after that. And have these intentional times where you're doing things. Same thing. So as a father, I'm pretty much, well, as a to-be father in a couple of weeks, I'm talking to myself when I'm like, I want to be off my phone in prison, right? But I know that a big part of my job is being on my phone. So I'll, when I'm on my phone, I'm going to be on my phone and I'll try and be away from my family and be in work mode. But then when I'm not working, I want to be off my phone and be completely present. And I think that, you know, that this multitasking thing is around being on your phone a lot because that's what a lot of people are doing. They are on their phone a ton. And it slows down your work. It, it, it makes your conversations less deep and less present and with lower quality. So with the multitasking that we try to do, as much as women will say, we can multitask, which is what I grew up hearing all the time, we can't. No matter if you're a male, if you're a female, or if you're anywhere in between, you cannot multitask to your full potential. You cannot do things at 100%. You could maybe do 50-50, but then you're not going to hear what that person's saying. Then you're not going to see that car coming through the stop sign. Then you're not going to um, you know, hear something that someone says to you that you really need to hear. So do one thing while you're doing it. Just do that. And then when you finish that, just move on. 
Pretend that you cannot multitask because you can't. And that's going to make your 2023 much more productive. When you're answering emails, answer your emails. When you're working out, just work out. Time your rest period, stay focused. When you're working, work. When you're with your wife, you're with your wife. When you're with your kids, play with your kids. Get crazy, get adventurous, make funny games, read them books, do this type of stuff. And it will make you a better person. I can promise you that. All right. For the last five minutes. Wow. Okay. I'm going to rush through these quotes because I think, and just give a little brief description on the back end. And I hope that these quotes make your 2023 better. Here we go. If a man knows not which port he sails, no wind is favorable. That's from Seneca. Ultimately, what does this mean? If you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter where the wind's going because you have no idea where you're going. <laughs> That's a really, really, really simple way to put it. Now, if we flip that on its head, we could say, if a man knows which port he sails, every wind is favorable. Whether it's a headwind, whether it's a tailwind, whether it's a sidewind, you know where you're going and you're going to do what you can to get there. But on the other side of things, if you have no idea where you're going, it doesn't matter where the wind is going. You don't know if it's going to be a tailwind, headwind, or sidewind because you, because you have no target. So at the start of this year, I want to encourage you to think about which port you're sailing to. Where do you want to go? Do you want to open up your own business? Do you want to lose 10 kg? Do you want to gain 5 kg of muscle? Do you want to engage with a personal trainer this year? Do you want to have better relationship with your friends? Do you want to make sure that you prioritize Thursday night for date night with your husband or your wife? Do you want to make sure that you call your Nana twice a month? Which port are you sailing to? This is a very important question to ask yourself. And I'd encourage you to take 10 minutes, even 15 minutes, just to think about what you want to do with yourself this year while you have downtime. Quote number two, regret what you do, not what you don't do. I think this is a quote from Mark Twain. And it's funny, I heard Livy King say this first on a podcast. R.I.P. Livy King and his and his uh, legacy that he's leaving after getting caught using steroids and lying to over, I don't know, two or three million people around the world. But anyway, regret what you do, not what you don't do. And I'm not encouraging you to be reckless, but I am encouraging you to be courageous. And that's a very different thing. Being courageous is doing the things that you really believe in. Being reckless is doing stupid things just because you have emotional urges to do so. Now, regret what you do, not what you don't do, is just encouraging you to really back yourself, okay? So think of the things that you want to do <laughs> and just go for it, right? Sort out what port you want to sail to and just back yourself because you'll never regret doing something, but you'll always regret always regret not doing something when you're pursuing something, right? You'll never regret going up to someone saying, Hey, can I have your number? And they say, no, you won't regret that, but you'll always regret not going up to that person and asking them for their number. So I want you to take that perspective into this year and really just do it right. One thing that people ask me a lot is just random advice, right? Give me some general advice. It's my birthday. I get that quite a lot. And I'm just like, just do it, right? I'm a person that just does. And maybe that's been at the detriment because I haven't thought it out. But I've also thought I've learned a lot of skills just from doing, right? I was a singer at a, at one point in time. I was a TV, TV presenter at one point in time. I was in a boy band on X Factor at one point in time in my life because I just did things. Am I a singer now? No way. Am I a TV presenter? Not really, All right? There's, I used to wash dishes. Why? Because I wanted money when I was at high school to do what I wanted to do. Am I washing dishes for a living now? No, but I learned amazing things and I just did things. Don't be paralyzed by fear because fear can stop you from doing things that you will learn a lot from. Maybe it's not your dream job, but it sure is a job that you'll earn money and learn crucial stuff through doing, right? I, I talk about this quite, quite a lot on the podcast. Well, I've mentioned it before, but when I did wash dishes, I really learned how systems worked and I learned how to create a good system to get things done on time or ahead of time. And that has helped me run a smooth business because it's all about systems, right? You wouldn't think about it when you're washing dishes, when you're out there till 2 a.m. scrubbing plates, scrubbing pots that chefs have just burnt. <laughs> uh, but as I look back, 
and go, that was a crazy time in life where I just worked, 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 worked. It helped me think, ah, oh, I was actually putting together systems. How can I apply that to what I do now? So regardless of what you're doing, there's always something to be learned. Quote number three, sometimes the reason you're tired is not because you've done too much, but because you've done too little of what brings you joy. That's from Sean Duperon. And I want you to take that on board just as it is. I'm not going to really expand on that. That makes sense. I'll just read it one more time. Sometimes the reason you're tired is not because you've done too much, but because you've done too little of what brings you joy. A lot of people are tired. A lot of people are stressed. A lot of people are anxious. I do wonder if they would have that same perspective in life if they were doing something that they really enjoyed. I can't say that I feel anxious, that I feel depressed, that I feel extremely stressed. And maybe it's because of my laid back life and parents and friends that I have. But it could also be the fact that I absolutely love what I do and don't feel stressed to wake up and do it. So that could be a factor. But obviously, this is a individual experience. But this could help you live a better life for sure. Quote number four, success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he or she has overcome. That's Booker T. Washington. Let me read that again. Success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome. This is a big one for me. I struggled a lot when I was younger and I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said I still didn't struggle with it. But looking at other people and what they have doesn't help your situation at all. And I'm still working through this because I look at people and go, man, they're so young. They have this and they have that. They drive this, they live in this, you know, they wear this. And I'm like, man, I want that too. But they didn't start where I started. They didn't lose their mom when they were 12. You know, they didn't go through this eating disorder when they were in their teens. They didn't, you know, have to live on their own from 18 onwards in cities where they didn't really have family. You know, and I'm not trying to say, woe is me. My life was so hard. But you can't compare yourself to someone who had rich parents and was given this and went to a private school and everything was handed on a platter to someone that grew up in a really tough upbringing. You know, you can't say that that other person is more successful to the other person because they've had to overcome different obstacles. You know, I'm only talking about a financial situation here, but then there's other aspects in life. There's social elements, there's mental elements, there's physical elements, you know, there's, um, there's spiritual elements. So another quote that comes into my mind is, um, comparison is the thief, the thief of joy. And I want you to take that on board to not compare yourself to where other people are in their life and look at the obstacles that you have to overcome and pat yourself on the back and keep charging through those obstacles because obstacles don't disappear. They just look different as you get older, as you get wiser, as you progress through life. So I want to encourage you to just keep smashing the obstacles and not compare yourself to other people. The last quote is the world is built by men who are no smarter than you. And I think that's from Steve Jobs. And I just want that to sit with you while you plan out your 2023 and what you want to achieve. I want you to know that the world is built by men who are no smarter than you. And that is an encouragement to me as well. I really love this quote because it really pushes me because sometimes I feel like I'm not as smart as other people. Maybe I'm not as jacked as other people. Maybe I'm not as charismatic or as funny as other people, but that doesn't matter. If you have a work ethic, it will always outdo talent. So keep working hard for 2023. I want to wrap up this podcast by quickly announcing the Built by Brock eight-week challenge that is running uh, beginning on January 9th. That is Monday coming. So you've got a few days to register. And let me just quickly tell you what's involved. You get uh, workouts. You have two workout phases in this eight-week challenge. No workouts are the same. Built by Brock has been going for over a year and a half, and no workout has been repeated. They are always brand new workouts. You get nutritional advice, flexible dieting guidelines, your calories and macros, 
for your goal at whatever rate you want to hit them. If you want to have an aggressive fat loss of eight kg plus in eight weeks, you can do that. If you want to lose two to three kgs, you can also do that for whatever your goal is. I have the right nutritional guidance for you. You get access to over six hours of educational videos to really help you understand uh, educational principles around training and nutrition. And you get exercise videos for every single workout. You can also swap exercises if you need to. You get access to home training or gym access training. It just depends on what membership you select. You can do the women's program at the gym at home or the men's program at the gym or at home. You get access to the Facebook community where I do post links where we will be doing live calls with me where I'm coaching people and answering questions. Uh, the Facebook group is a great place for you to answer questions or or, 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 or ask your questions that you do have if you want to and you can post your, your exercises that you do for form feedback as well in there. The Built by Brock 8-Week Challenge is not just a challenge you sign up to. You sign up to the Built by Brock membership, which is about 49 AUD per month or 36 USD per month. Now, you join the membership that renews every 28 days. I just want this to be clear so it doesn't feel like I'm trying to scam you. That's definitely not my vibe. Now, when you sign up, all the Built by Brock members get access to the challenge. Okay, so you're not signing up to a challenge. You're signing up to Built by Brock, which has the challenge, just so that is very clear, so that you can unsubscribe anytime. When the challenge finishes, you can unsubscribe. If you don't want to even finish the challenge and you have to stop for some reason, you can unsubscribe then too. So if you do want to check that out, go to teambrockashby.com. There's prizes to be won, um, which are, uh, are valued highly. You get free Built by Brock memberships. You also get one-to-one -one coaching with me. Uh, and there's other things up for grabs as well. So please check that out at teambrockashby.com um, and you will get guided that way as well. Other than that, I think I'm going to go now. Have an awesome 2023 and there will be many more podcasts to come with many more guests as well. If you do have any guest recommendations, please email us at team at teambrockhashby.com and we'll take them on board and try and hunt these people down and have some awesome podcasts. I will be doing a lot more solo ones this year as well like this to really get my ideas across. And even I think I might really dive into the books that I'm reading to help uh, help you uh, get some great points from these books that I do spend a lot of time reading. Other than that, have an amazing 2023. You'll hear from me soon. I'll talk to you later.